This video will look at the idea of a manifold and how it is formally defined. It will also provide an example of a change of coordinates as a mapping between open sets. So this video is a remake of the previous one, also entitled Manifolds, and this just goes into the content in a little bit more depth. So let's have a look at the intuitive notion of a manifold. So we can think of a manifold as a topological space that locally looks like Euclidean space with all of its usual topology. So take a manifold, take any small region around any particular point on that manifold, and you'll find it looks approximately flat, approximately Euclidean. So a topological space is a set of points along with a set of neighbourhoods for each point. So in other words, each point of an n-dimensional manifold has a neighbourhood that is homeomorphic to a, to a Euclidean space of dimension n. A homeomorphism is a continuous function that maps one topological space to another and has a continuous inverse function. Some definitions. So let's start. A Hausdorff space is a topological space in which distinct points have disconnected neighbourhoods. So more formally, given two points, x and y in a topological space T, so x, point x, point y, in some space, each with their own neighbourhoods. That is, the neighbourhood of x is the set U, and the neighbourhood of y is the set B. Then it is true that the intersection of these two sets is the null set or empty set. So these two sets are disjoint. A base or basis means that for any topological space T with some topology X, there is a collection of open sets in X such that every open set in X can be written as a union of elements of the base. So for example, the collection of all open intervals on the real line forms a base for a topology on the real line because the intersection of any two open intervals is itself an open interval. Or it's empty. Another example is the collection of open balls that forms a base for a metric topology on Euclidean space, where a metric topology or metric space is a set for which distances between all members of the set are defined, hence the metric. An open ball in uh, Rn of radius r centered around some point y equals y1 to yn, depending on the dimension, consists of the points x such that the absolute value modulus of x minus y is less than r, not including r, but less than r. So you get, you can imagine a three-dimensional space, you've got a spherical ball, the uh, edges of that ball, the surface, is not included because the modulus of x minus y it has to be less than r. And the absolute value x minus y is the square root of the sum i equals 1 to n, whatever dimension you're in, xi minus yi all squared. So that distance has to be less than some radius r. So think of a spherical ball in three dimensions, the endpoints are not included. In n dimensions, again, the endpoints are not included for that ball. It's an open ball. A countable set is a set with the same number of elements as some subset of the natural numbers. The natural numbers being the counting numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is, it can be finite or infinite, but each element can be mapped to a natural number. So it's countable. A compact, compact means a subset of Euclidean space that is finite and closed because it includes its endpoints. Sigma compact means the union of countably many compact subspaces. That's the union. A paracompact space is a topological space in which every open cover has an open refinement that is locally finite. There's a couple of words there which are explained just below. So a cover, over here, a cover of an open set X, that's not including the boundary points on the set, is a collection of open subsets of X whose union contains X. A refinement of a cover of a space X is a new cover of the same space such that every set in the new cover is a subset of some set in the old cover. An open cover of a space X is locally finite if every point of the space has a neighbourhood that intersects only finitely many sets in the cover. So examples of manifolds in one dimension, examples of manifolds include lines and circles, but not shapes where lines cross each other since the crossing points are then not homeomorphic to one-dimensional Euclidean space. 
So that means there's no one-to-one -one mapping and consequently no inverse of the crossing point. Uh, in two dimensions, manifolds include surfaces such as the plane, sphere, torus and the chlorine bottle among others. And in physics, a manifold can be any set of points that can be continuously parameterized by any number of independent variables. So for example, the phase space of a particle in classical mechanics using its three position coordinates and its three momentum coordinates forms a six-dimensional manifold. Alright, so for example purposes, let's use the surface of this sphere as our manifold and just let it be generally representative of manifolds um, so that we can gain some idea behind what a manifold is. So a formal definition of a manifold an n-dimensional topological manifold M is a topological Hausdorff space with a countable base, which is locally homeomorphic to Rn. This means that for every point P in M, and here's our point P on the manifold M, there is an open neighbourhood U of P, and that's that blue area just around here. You can see that's an open set, or representative of an open set which includes the point P. So there's an open neighbourhood U of P, and a homeomorphism, F, that maps the open set U to the open set B. So it maps the set U onto, onto an open set V, which is contained in Rn, which is the same dimension as the uh, manifold. So locally, pick a point on a manifold, and locally that point looks like some part of Euclidean space. If you just think of the globe, pick any point on the Earth where you're standing, look around you, and the Earth appears flat. Or zoom out to space, and you would see the obvious curvature of, uh, of the Earth's surface. But locally, it looks very flat to you. And that's what this definition is trying to get at. So a topological manifold also has the properties of being sigma compact and paracompact, with the number of its connected components being countable or denumerable. So whatever shape, the surface of a sphere is quite simple, but you can imagine other manifolds where there's connected pieces. But so long as they're connected, then, then they satisfy the definition of being this topical, topological manifold. All right. All right. The mapping F, this one here, that takes the, the open set U to the open set V in Euclidean space, so from the manifold to Euclidean space, is called a chart or a coordinate system. It can also be called a coordinate chart, a coordinate patch, or a coordinate map, or even local frame. Now charts are often represented as the ordered pair U subscript alpha and a map F subscript alpha. So here's our manifold, here's the open set U, there's a mapping that takes the points in here to Euclidean space to the set V over here. So we need both the coordinates, the open set U around some point, which covers as much of the manifold as we can, some or, or most of it, uh, maybe even all of it, um, and that can be mapped to some open set of same dimension in Euclidean space. All right. So you need the open set and the mapping, and you have a chart. So the chart covers part, general part of the manifold. Alright, the set U is the domain or local coordinate neighbourhood of the chart. So that's the domain or the local coordinate neighbourhood of the chart, that's the open set U. The set V is the image of the set U under this one-to-one -one and onto mapping. So every point in U is in V, and it's a one-to-one -one map, so it'll be an inverse map back the other way. The image of the point P in the coordinate system Z belonging to the set U here with coordinate Zn is the point F of P over here, F of P, so here's P under this mapping is F of P and is called the coordinates of P in the chart. So there's the coordinates of P in the chart. A set of charts in subscript alpha such that alpha belongs to the natural numbers with domains U alpha is called an atlas of M if the union of all of those charts covers the manifold M. And that's what this is saying. The 
union of all of those charts together makes up the manifold M. Covers it. All right, next we need to consider the intersection of two charts as shown below. So here's our manifold and we have two charts now, U alpha and U beta. On the manifold M below, there are two open sets that overlap. So what happens when they are mapped to Euclidean space? Okay, so here's the chart U alpha and the mapping F alpha to Euclidean space. So all of U alpha mapped to V alpha. And here's U beta, another chart, and it's mapping F beta, and it maps to Euclidean space as well here. But notice the green section, the intersection here, what happens there? Well, it turns out when we map it from U alpha to V alpha and U beta to V beta, that there will be a coordinate transformation that takes us from, uh, say, V alpha to V beta, or vice versa, V beta to V alpha. That mapping we'll call F alpha beta, and the inverse we can call F beta alpha. All right, if F alpha and F beta are two charts, then on the intersection of their domains, U alpha intersection U beta, the green part here, there exists another homeomorphism, F alpha beta, which is F alpha, whose domain is the intersection, is mapped to F beta, whose uh, domain here is this intersection as well where F alpha beta is F beta composed of F alpha inverse. And that takes us from here over to here, and the inverse takes us back the other way. <laughs> Alright, the mapping F alpha beta, mapping F alpha whose domain is the intersection here, <laughs> maps us to F beta alpha whose domain is this intersection here, same thing gives a relation between the coordinates in the two charts and it's called a coordinate transformation or just a change of coordinates on the manifold. Alright, so pick this point P, here it is, in the Z-coordinate system, map it to Euclidean space with F alpha and we get the point over here, or with F beta, maps over here to this point here. And then we have this coordinate transformation or coordinate change from, the, from V alpha to V beta or back the other way. Alright, now having mapped from the Z coordinate system to V alpha in what we call the coordinates that describe this point P in V alpha as being the X coordinate system and in V beta the coordinate system could be the Y coordinate system. So the coordinates of the point P are mapped from one chart, F alpha, to another chart, F beta, according to F alpha beta, maps this point in the X coordinate system to this point in the Y coordinate system. And the inverse is, of course, back the other way. F alpha beta, the inverse is F beta alpha. And this is our coordinate change, or coordinate transformation. Now as an example, stereographic projection, let's take the two spheres our manifold, that is S2 is the set of all points X, Y, Z that belong to 3 space, uh, and such that they follow the, or obey the rule of X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared equals A squared, the radius of this sphere. And project each point on the sphere onto the plane Z equals minus A. And we're going to do that by taking a line from the North Pole and using that line crossing from the, from the North Pole, crossing through the sphere at some point, sphere centred at the origin here, of course, from this rule, and continue that point where it passes through the sphere down to this plane Z equals minus A. And from that we'll be able to map every point on the sphere, except of course the North Pole. So we won't be able to cover the North Pole, but every other point with this method, stereographic projection, will map to a point on Z equals on the plane Z equals minus A. Alright, so let the coordinates on the plane be P dash equals XY. Given that N, P and P dash all lie on a straight line, and then we must have P dash minus N is T, some constant times uh, P minus N, where T is a positive real number. After some algebra, which is not going to be shown here, we find that we have mapped the surface of the sphere to the plane, whose coordinates on the R2 surface is XY, and it's made up of the coordinates from the manifold here, X, Y and Z, and that's our F alpha 
map chart. Now, the, the inverse back the other way, um, so the coordinates on the manifold in terms of the coordinates on the plane is this object here. That's the inverse transformation back. So this one took us from the manifold to the plane, and this takes us back the other way from the um, plane back to the manifold. All right, so the chart U alpha F alpha is composed of the set U alpha is a set of ordered pairs X, Y, such that X, Y belong to the reals. And the map F alpha is from the manifold X, Y, Z to the plane X, Y, capital X and capital Y. All right, what we're going to do now is because we couldn't cover the North Pole with the previous chart, we need a second chart in order to form an atlas that will cover the entire manifold, which is the surface of that sphere. So we're now going to project to the plane Z equals plus A, that's above the sphere, and project from the South Pole. And this results in the new set of coordinates UV on the plane of Z equals plus A, which is above the sphere. Last time we did below the sphere. We get capital U, capital V in terms of the coordinates on the manifold, X, Y, and Z, and that's the mapping F beta from, from the surface of the sphere to the plane Z equals A. So the chart U beta F beta is composed of the set U beta is the set of ordered pairs U V such that U and V belong to the reals, and the map for F beta is from this the coordinate system on the sphere to the plane Z equals plus A and its coordinate system U V. And now for the coordinate transformation F alpha beta, which is a coordinate change from the X Y coordinate system, that's the plane Z equals minus A, to the coordinate system U V. So a coordinate transformation. And that gives U V in terms of cap capital U, capital V in terms of capital X and capital Y this year. And that's our uh, coordinate transformation F alpha beta, and that can be written as F beta composed of F alpha inverse equals F alpha beta. Now, at this point, I might just go back a couple of slides. I hope that's all right with no one minds. If you think here, F alpha here, F beta is this, and if you compose it of this inverse, the inverse of F alpha takes you back to this set, and then F beta takes you from that set back to Euclidean space. And that's how we see, finally at the end here, we get this transformation. F beta composed of F alpha inverse is the transformation from the XY coordinate system to the UV coordinate system, F alpha beta, the coordinate transformation. And that's it.